I think the fourth generation can actually compete with White Knights, Holbein, Michello, Schminka, or even Daniel Smith. They just need to have... Hi guys, this is Ayan Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today I just feel so grateful and fortunate. It's two weeks before my 36th birthday and guess what? I received a 36 color watercolor tube set and that is none other than the fourth generation of Paul Rubens watercolors. I'm so thrilled to check this out. So without further ado, let's go. So this set was kindly sent to me by Paul Rubens last week. And also, if you can remember, Weeks ago, they sent me this set called Gutsai, which were the traditional Chinese paints. I reviewed it too, so if you have not seen it yet, please do check it out. I'm linking it here. But yeah, they again sent me this new set, and this time they're calling it the 4th Generation Watercolors. By the way, for those who do not know, Paul Rubens is a paint brand from China that came to popularity 3 to 4 years ago to many artists because of its affordability and quality. But anyway, this video is not sponsored and I always review my paints with my honest opinion. According to Paul Rubens, the 4th gen is their best line yet, so this is setting my expectations higher. I threw Paul Rubens via email some questions that might also interest you, so I'm sharing here their replies. First, I asked how the 4th gen is different to the Bluetooth Paul Rubens, and of course they replied that the 4th gen, being the latest model, are of higher quality, more colors are single pigment, have better transparency and consistency. They also added that the Paul Rubens and the blue tubes are to be discontinued. So hoarders, that's your go signal. I also asked if the 4th gen is also going to be released in half pants and sadly they replied no. But you can anyway pour your own pants and it's more economical. As of today, the 4th generation is available at AliExpress and on Amazon. For the 24 colors, 5ml, it's 59.99 US dollars. And for the 36 colors, 5ml, it's 79.99 US dollars. I think I can also make a hand poured set of these and make it available at my Shopee store for my Filipino artist friends who'd like to try these paints out. I'll be putting all the useful links at the description box. I can say that the price is a mid-range for a 5ml Pro Grade set. But let's see if the performance exceeds the price. Now let's check out the box. The box is I think sturdy. It's matte black and the letterings and the logo are in gold paint. And also I've noticed that Paul Rubens now has a new logo. This is I think an eye of an animal. And it says here Paul Rubens. We have here some Chinese characters. You can always use by the way the Google Translate app if you want to translate these um, characters. It says here artists watercolor 36 colors times 5 ml. We have here a coat and it says here Paul Rubens artists watercolors. At the back, we have here some QR codes, some uh, um, Chinese characters again. We have here some um, websites and it says here, of course, Awen. And here are some more information about the company. It says here 36 because we have here 36 colors. Now let's check out what's inside our box. And here we have a uh, product catalog. And uh, I'm glad that it's now in English. And by the way, it says here 49 because we have here 49 colors. I wonder why they did not make it 50. And here also it indicates that it's available in 5ml, 15ml, and 60ml tubes. So here we have some product information, brand and culture. And I've actually read this earlier and they're telling us that they're not substituting the expensive pigments with the cheaper pigments so I mean I think those are the cobalts and the cadmiums so here they have the legend of the transparency and yeah the light fastness here are the tube sizes we have here also some of the features of the paints and here's some more information in different languages and we have here a photo showing two guys with a logo of blocks do they have a partnership that's interesting 
And by the way, in the box cover, it didn't mention fourth generation, but here in the product catalog, it says here, yeah, there, fourth generation. Now let's reveal our tubes. So here now are our beautiful 36 tubes and they're placed in this plastic tray with um, powder finish. Now let's check out an individual tube. So the tubes are made out of aluminum with a plastic cap and in front we have here the number code. We have here the color name. We have here the logo, Paul Rubens, Artists Watercolors. And at the back, we have here the pigment code. So this is PB29. We have also the transparency rating and the light fastest rating. Here we have some Chinese characters. It says here, Made in China and 5ml. Now let's compare our 5ml Paul Rubens strips against the other strip sizes from the other brands. Let's begin with the 18ml from Old Holland. We also have a 15 ml from M Gram. We have a 10 ml from Sennelier. A 5 ml from Windsor and Newton. And another 5 ml from Core. Now for our swatches and sample painting, I'm using, as always, Arches 185 Gold Press Cotton Paper. And for the brushes, I'm using my Nevskaya Palitra Kolinsky brushes. I've already arranged the tubes according to spectrum, according to my preference, and I'm going to be dotting down the paints in our swatches for faster swatching. And so now we're done dotting down our paints. I'm happy I did not encounter any binder pigment separation issues in our tubes. All are very good. The first color is lemon yellow, it's PY3 and this is just so vibrant. Obviously this is the cool yellow of this set and now it's semi-transparent. Now this next color is cadmium yellow using PY35, this is the genuine cadmium yellow pigment. And this is also very vibrant, it's so alive but this is more on the opaque side since it's a genuine cadmium. Now this next color is cadmium yellow medium using PY35 so this is another genuine cadmium color and this is the mid yellow of the set and it's also semi opaque. Now next color is transparent yellow using PY150 this is my all time favorite yellow. In mass tone it can go earthy to warm yellow but in light washes it can go cool yellow so this for me is very versatile and this version is just so vibrant also. Now our next color is Naples Yellow. It's using PW6, PY53, and PBR24. And this is appearing to be semi-transparent because it has PW6. It's a uh, yellowish flesh color. And I think they can just use PBR24 here. It's the, you know, Naples Yellow single pigment that I know. But yeah, this color is also nice. Now Indian Yellow is using PY83. This is a vibrant warm to orange yellow color and I think this is more on the transparent side. Can I just say that the first six colors are just so pigmented that it has already made my water <laughs> so yellow I need to change this for the next line. Now Transparent Orange is using PO71 and I'm happy they have this pigment. This is my favorite PO pigment next to PO48 and this is also good when it comes to light fastness. It's actually very good as rated by handprint and yes, this is transparent. Next color is Chromium Orange U using PO62. PO62 is very good when it comes to light fastness as per ASTM and it's excellent by handprint.com. And I think this is semi-transparent, but let's wait until the color, you know, the colors are dry because you know the transparency can still change. But this is an orange that leans towards yellow. I think I should have placed it before transparent orange, but that's fine. Now here we have another genuine cadmium color. We have cadmium red light using PR108. And as expected, this is on the opaque side. And this is just so amazing, it's so intense. Wow. Pyrrol Ruby Red using PR254 is another very vibrant color here. 
I'm actually expecting this to be more on the opaque side but seeing the swatch now it's transparent so it's vibrant and it's transparent I'm so happy now next color is Perilyn Maroon PR 179 PR 179 is in my palette this is the genuine Perilyn Maroon uh, pigment but I think this version is leaning a bit more on the cooler side but this is a nice version I think it's like a lizard and crimson now this next color Kunakadon Rose using PV19 looks like a lizard and crimson it doesn't look like Kunakadon Rose yeah it's a mid red or a cool mid red but yeah this is just strange but it's a beautiful color and it's transparent now the first color in our third row is Quinacridone Maroon using PV42. This is the Quinacridone Pink that I know. And it's a cool red. I am happy to see a cool red now. Now this Quinacridone Violet PV19 I think looks standard. And it's also very pigmented and also transparent. Next color is Dioxinine Violet using PV23. This is just so intense as well. It's very deep. The mask tone looks like black, <laughs> but yeah, the wash is the real dioxin violet and it's also transparent. Now next color is Brilliant Blue Violet using PB29 and PV23. And this is also very intense, very pigmented, just like the oxygen violet. It's transparent too, but I'm just wondering why it's called Brilliant Blue Violet. It's pigmented but not brilliant. Now their indigo is using PB15 is to 1 and PB66. This is a nice hue honestly and it's transparent. I'm just not sure about PB66. It's not a light fast color or pigment. It's the synthetic indigo color. Now this next color is called Indian Throne Blue using PB60. So this is the usual hue that I know of uh, the PB60. This is transparent and very intense as well. The first color in the fourth row is French Blue using PB29 so clearly this is French Ultramarine and yeah the hue is also standard. I think this is transparent. Now next color is Cobalt Blue Light using PB28 and also I think this is a standard hue and it's transparent I think. Next color is Berlin Blue using PB27 so this is just Russian Blue but this hue I think is like yeah, a turquoise version of Prussian Blue and it's also transparent. Now next color is Azure Hue using PW4 and PB15 is to 3. This is another cool blue color here. It's transparent but also for some reason I'm not seeing PW4 so I'm saying it's transparent. Now the translucent turquoise using PB16 is a nice hue, it's transparent, it's also very pigmented but I think this version is leaning more towards the green side as compared to the others that I've seen. Next color is cobalt turquoise using PB28, this is semi-opaque and very vibrant, I love also this version. Now Oriental Green is using PG7 so I think this is just a standard Taylor Green color. It's transparent and very pigmented as well. Now next color is Cobalt Turquoise Dark using PG26. This is a genuine Cobalt Turquoise Dark color. And do you see the texture? I love this color. Although it's semi-transparent, I really love this hue. Next color is Olive Green Dark and it's using PO62 and PG7. I love this hue also but it doesn't look like an Olive Green Dark. It looks like you know the green of White Knights using PG8. Now next color is Sap Green using PY153 and PG7. Honestly, I'm not into this type of Sap Green. I find this to be very acidic. Or it's too vibrant for me for a sap green but that's just me anyway it's intense and I think this is transparent next color is May green using PY151 and PG7 honestly I'm not into yellow greens or apple greens or this um, shades but yeah this is also a very vibrant color and it's semi opaque now they're olive green 
this is what I'm talking about. This is the green that I like. This reminds me so much of Serpentine Genuine. I don't know if it registers on screen or in my camera but yeah this looks exactly like Serpentine Genuine minus the dual um, tone of colors. Um, it's using PO62 and PG36 and yeah this is my favorite green so far here along with the Cobalt Turquoise Duck PG26. Earth Yellow using PY42 is acting like a yellow ochre and as expected this is on the opaque side but I love also the hue. Now their burnt Shanna for some reason is using two pigments PR101 PBK9. I would prefer this to be just single pigment uh, PBR7 preferably but the color is nice also it looks burnt Shanna. Reminds me of the version of Winsor & Newton. Their Venetian Red using PR101 is also a nice hue. Although I feel that this is leaning a bit towards orange, but yeah, it's semi opaque and uh, yeah, it's also a nice hue, I must say. Next color is Indian Red using PR101 and PR206. This is the first time I'm seeing this combination for Indian Red. Usually it's just PR101, but for some reason they are using two pigments. And this is on the opaque side as expected. The next color is Brown Umber. It uses three pigments, PB15 is to one, PBR7, and PBK9. This is their sort of dark brown in the set, so like a raw umber. And the last color is Ivory Black, PBK9. This is a standard hue in my opinion, and it's totally fine. Now we're done with our swatches, and as you can see, we have some stains here. We have some markings of the pigments. I think that's an evidence of their pigment load. It's very high and how staining some colors are. And some of the paints have already dried after cutting down. So we still have marks here. They've, they're so thick. Um, I've already washed off some of these and put them in my napkins. But still we have some marks here. And it's not pleasing of course, I know, but yeah, I'm gonna be needing to uh, fix this a bit. Now before doing our sample painting, let's proceed to the color mixes since we have space. So here I have uh, made a space for mixing the primaries that I love and that is the transparent yellow PY150, quinacridone maroon, uh, PV42, and translucent turquoise. Uh, PB16. I'm using the PV42 instead of the PV19 because this is more on the cool side and this is more in the mid and I'd like to have sort of a uh, CMY for my primaries and let's see the range of colors that it can produce and here I'm mixing Naples Yellow and Queen Violet to each achieve a uh, skin color and on this space I'm gonna be mixing Burnt Sienna and French blue to achieve sort of gray color because they don't have a paint spray. So let's begin. So as you can see, we were able to mix the three colors well. I think they blended really well and we were able to produce vibrant mixes from just three colors. So that's a good thing. Now let's do a skin tone using Naples Yellow and Pinacidone Violet. You know, I really love this combination because it matches my skin color. See that? Yep. 
Now for our next combination, let's mix burnt sienna and French blue to achieve a gray color. So here are the two colors. I think this is a nice combination of these two colors, but I think since the burnt sienna is more on the orange side, it creates somewhat greenish gray color if you put more burnt sienna and it creates a greenish blue gray color when you add more French blue. So that's really interesting. Now for our sample painting, I have chosen five colors. We have here French blue. Translucent Turquoise, Naples Yellow, Inacredone Maroon, and Burnt Sienna. Now both our swatches and sample painting have finally dried, we can now have a closer look. Now let's begin with the color selection. Of course, we have lots of colors. We have 36 colors. And looking at these, we have both um, warm and cool of each of the primary colors. And I appreciate that. We cannot miss that because we have 36 colors. But still, I can note some things. Um, I think these two violets almost look the same. I can exchange one of these with another cool red, say a PR122, for a uh, magenta, more uh, blue-leaning red, because we only have one, and this is still, I think, a bit more warm. But yeah, can pass as a cool red. And there are, I think, also lots of blues here. We have eight, if I count indigo as blue. Although I love this color, I'm not sure about the PB66 because it's not a very light fast color. Actually, looking at the entire range, this is the only color that is not very good when it comes to light fast. This is just, I think, fair PB66. Good thing it has PB51 in it. And I think there are also lots of greens for a 36 color set. We have six. But I must say, none of these greens look the same. These three browns look close. But yeah, I am very happy with the pigments selected here because uh, most of them are very good to excellent when it comes to light fastness. And I appreciate that they have some of the expensive and very light fast pigments such as the Cobalt Turquoise PB28, PB28 Cobalt Blue Light, the PG26, not common in sets. And also I love that they have PR179, my favorite red, and PY150. These pigments are not common in sets like this. And also PO71, the transparent orange. And by the way, looking at the 49 colors of the fourth generation, 35 are single pigment, 2 are not 
applicable so they did not identify which pigments are used but if we are to consider them like primatech colors and consider them as single pigment colors we have 37 over 49 so 76 percent of their entire line are single pigment which is quite high now for this set 25 are single pigment 11 are multiple pigments that's 69 or roughly 70 percent so still high so i appreciate that also now it comes to intensity, vibrancy, and pigment load. I cannot say anything about this set. They're very pigmented. The colors are deep. They're vibrant. The colors that need to be vibrant are vibrant. In mass tone, some colors are close to being black because that's how pigmented they are. Especially the indigo, the, the oxygen violet, the berlin blue, even the azure. Considering it has PW4, still very deep. But I think the better edge of the fourth generation is the way the colors mix. I was very happy with how the mixes turned out. They mix very smoothly and you can see that in our CMY mix here. And also my skin tone mix and my gray mix here they blended so smoothly and i'm very happy with that and also you can see that in our sample painting they don't move so quickly like core but it's fine with me i want you know managing or handling my paints myself but yeah the way the paints mix is just remarkable so what else color selection vibrancy pigment load um the way they mix all are okay all are good um light fastness all the colors are light fast very good to excellent except for one pb66 um when it comes to transparency yeah before i forget um, some colors are semi-opaque or semi-transparent and i can understand why for example for py35 this is cadmium color so it's naturally on the opaque side naples yellow has pw6 so it can be opaque i can accept that too these two pb28 Genuine cobalts also um, acceptable as semi-opaque or semi-transparent. Also PY42 and PR101 Indian Red. So those are the opaque colors here. Still not super opaque, just I think semi-opaque or semi-transparent and it's totally fine with me. Now to see how well these paints adhere on paper, we are gonna be rubbing a sheet of napkin and if we get smudges, then these paints are not adhering well on paper and they can be chalky. So, our paper didn't get any smudges or traces of the paints, so I can say that these paints are adhering well on paper. I think they're not chalky. Now for the comparison portion, our favorite part. Let's begin with our student grades. Of course, these are less performing as compared to our fourth generation being student grade. So this is just for visual comparison. Let's begin with the Best Buy watercolors. We have the Symbolion watercolors. We also have Dong A Creative. The Faber Castell Solid Watercolors, Sterling Arts, Reeves Watercolors, the Giorgioni Watercolor Cakes, the Sakura Koi Pocket Filled Sketchbox, the Magiwa Basics Watercolors, the Montmartre Two Seasons, Faber Castell in Tubes, Marie's in Tubes, Marie's Watercolor in Pans, Art Ranger Watercolors, and we have Pebeo Studio Watercolors, the Pentel Watercolors, fine. Then we have the Renaissance watercolors, the Prang 2019 and the Prang 2007. Then we have the Frank and Bojok Louvre watercolors, the Koinor and the Linky Brilliant watercolors, the Owen watercolors metal case, the Owen watercolor cakes, the Kuretake Gansai Tambi. Then we also have the Simi Art Semi Dry watercolors, the Superior watercolors. The Simi Arts Arts Arch watercolors. Then we also have the Simi Arts Solid watercolors. The Superior Fan palette. The Superior Foldable palette. Then we have the Pretty Excellent watercolors. We also have here the Miyahimi Solid watercolors. The Pelican Transparent watercolors. The Good Side Chinese Painting Pigments. The Brustro Artists watercolors. The Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pans. Then we have the Sonnet watercolors and the Windsor & Newton Cutman, the Grumbacker Academy, and the Windsor & Newton China. Now let's go to the artist grade paints. Well, I have some here that I think are less performing as compared to the fourth generation. Let's begin with Lucas Aquarel, 1862, the Espanoleto Aquarela, the Cucuyo Camlin, Camel Watercolors, the Mungio Professional Watercolors, 
the Prima Tropicals and the Wichitrong by Silpacorn. But yeah, I still love these two colors here from Silpacorn. Now let's compare our Paul Rubens 4th generation against the earlier versions of Paul Rubens. Let's begin with the uh, Paul Rubens in pants. Obviously, the 4th generation are looking more vibrant as compared to the, the pants version. And also, we have the floral set, also tube set. And I think the vibrancy is comparable. But you can also notice that some of the colors in our fourth generation are far more pigmented and deeper. And you can just compare the Dioxazine Violet, the uh, Ultramarine, and also our Cadmiums. Everything is just the same hue, but the colors of 4th generation are deeper and slightly bit more pigmented. Now let's go to the artist grade paints that are, I think, either comparable or better than the 4th generation. Let's begin with the Isaro Extra Fine. I think they're comparable. The Utrecht Artists Watercolors, yes, also comparable. When I say comparable, it doesn't mean that they're of the same quality or same characteristics i think my satisfaction when i say comparable is just on the same level oh or very close so blocks also same level core i think i'd go with core for now but price wise fourth generation um rembrandt i think this can be a draw a galio honey watercolors also a draw white knights i can say they're also very comparable but I feel like the fourth generation is more pigmented. Now Windsor and Newton. Hmm. Now we have a game. I think this can be a draw, but yeah, Windsor and Newton still has cleaner colors. Holbein, vibrancy wise, very comparable. But for now I'd go with the Holbein because they're more established, I must say. But yeah, visually very comparable. Then I also have the Pure Pigment set, very comparable also, but still a bit cleaner um, colors in the Mijello Pure Pigment. And of course, Schminka Horodam. <laughs> um, I decide with Schminka for this because of the color choices, the range of colors as well, and they've been there for quite some time. And of course, lastly, Daniel Smith. So now, if you are to ask me would I recommend the 4th generation of Paul Rubens watercolors, my answer is a definite yes. This video is not sponsored, so I'm reviewing this with all honesty and to be honest, I was really happy, satisfied and amazed with these paints. The colors are all so vibrant and intense, very pigmented. They mix really well. I think that is their best feature. The colors didn't have granulation or they didn't have much texture, but still you can see character in some of the colors like the olive green, the PG26 and even the PY150. I love this hue also the PO71. The French blue showed texture but not really strong texture but that's fine. Uh, although I prefer paints with uh, strong granulations, I know some artists prefer smoother paints, paints that don't granulate and that is the reason why I created a uh, landscape painting that has smooth skies and just less complicated uh, landscape sample painting here. And although they only have 49 colors, most of these are single pigment and excellent and very good when it comes to light fastness. So that is, you know, plus 10 points for me. I think the fourth generation can actually compete with White Knights, Holbein, Mijello, Schminka, or even Daniel Smith. They just need to have more distributors. They just need a wider reach. They just need to promote this better. As of now, we can only buy this via AliExpress and at Amazon. For my Filipino artist friends who would like to try these paints out, I'm gonna be making one or two half pan sets out of my tubes and put them at my Shopee store. And so I'm gonna be linking all of these shops at the description box. So please do check it out should you be interested. To Karin of Paul Rubens, thank you so much for sending these paints to me. I really appreciate it and I'm honestly very happy with these paints and I'm also very satisfied with my output here. And so I think that's all for our Paul Rubens 4th generation watercolors review. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment it at the comment box. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do subscribe to my channel to show support and please also don't forget to like and share this video. Again, this has been Alan, thanking you for watching. See you again on the next video. Bye-bye!